Good afternoon, welcome back to learnpiezo.org. Uh, today, we're going to be taking that infinite degree of freedom system model and making it into single degree of freedom system. And this makes, this is uh, useful for several reasons, easier to understand the uh, kind of material behavior. It's easy, easy to model. Oftentimes we don't want to go to such a complicated model. Uh, we want to uh, specify the model and simplify it. Thereby we can more easily understand it, more easily make measurements and interpret uh, the behavior we measure in real life. So let's get started now. How, wh what am exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about taking this piezo plate vibrating in a weird way like this, you know, where the displacement looks like this, or it can go like, depending on the frequency. So basically the displacement U of X also depends on the frequency, as we saw in the earlier equation. And we're gonna take that equation and make it into a nice mass spring damper system. We have a mass, we have a spring, and we have a force, you know, we have a force, uh, and these are all gonna be equivalent parameters. So this is gonna be equivalent modeling. So, that complicated equation which we derived a few times ago, you can also say this is dependent on frequency. Uh, this equation was the dial, uh, piezoelectric charge constant times the voltage divided by thickness, and this call we'll say the length is the same as the thickness, and the thickness is the length, over 1 over k, and k was this type of uh, frequency ratio between the f forcing frequency and the sound velocity of the material. And we had this equation sine kx divided by cosine kl, one half. And we want to make this equation in the form of the form that we see for a normal equation. So we have for mass spring damper, we have this equation now over here. Uh, we have the mass, force, uh, we have the fre natural frequency, let me write it again, um, down here. We want to convert this into a force equivalent divided by mass equivalent square root natural frequency minus forcing frequency, both squared, square that quantity. And all of this derivation which I'm doing, all, all this was in that attachment on this page. So if you go to learnpiezo.org, lecture 6, you'll find this attachment outlining how do you derive uh, this basic equation uh, from a mass spring damper model. Imaginary spring, you get this tangent loss parameter. And you can learn more about that in this lecture and uh, previous lectures that I've done and also in the attachment. So we'll continue. Uh, so we want to first find the equivalent mass, which is going to be one of the more easier things to do. The equivalent mass of the system is rho, which is the mass density, kilograms per meter cubed, uh, multiplied by the length, which is the direction where we're applying the electric field over. Uh, so we have like this length, and we'll call this thickness, and we'll call that width, you know, going backward. And the electric field is applied like that. Uh, so length multiplied uh, by the width multiplied by the thickness. That's the equivalent mass. Simple enough? Yep. The equivalent force of the system. So if we analyze the piezoelectric material, and let's just talk about DC conditions uh, right now for, to get an idea. The parameter which we're going to consider for AC conditions is only going to be... Um, only really the uh, spring constant of the material really undergoes a lot of change. So this is the force. Uh, so we are applying an electric field. This is the length. So we're applying electric field across the length. Sometimes you do over the thickness. So that's electric field. And thus you get some material expanding. So thus you get a strain by the piezoelectric D constant. If you multiply, uh, or rather divide both sides by the elastic compliance, you get stress. And you multiply both sides by the area, you get force. So basically the force equivalent is going to be this. D 
times electric field divided by s a all the geometry geometrical considerations are kind of put into this electrical uh, field term but uh, this is the equivalent force this is the equivalent mass all right let's move on to the equivalent stiffness we got 10 minutes to do this so let's go so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, focus our discussion when we're doing the one degree of freedom system model we're going to focus our discussion on the first resonant mode and the first resonant mode one we can call it omega one or omega n uh, it's at this frequency n pi well we're not going to use n because we're just going to assume it's the first one over l multiplied by the sound velocity which we know the sound velocity is equal to one over square root rho that's density times elastic compliance now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we're, we're going to find the solution in this area so before you know if we ha I mentioned that we had this kind of a graph we had that we have we have this usually when you use piezoelectric materials you use them in their first resonant mode so this is the first resonance the geometrical third resonance or the electrical second resonance so we assume this displacement and this is the frequency obviously um, we, we tend to use the materials in this kind of range so in this case this estimation will be reasonably good when we're using it in this uh, frequency range so we, we're going to assume it's the we're forcing on the first resonance frequency so what is the displacement at L over 2 which is the edge because we're assuming the coordinate system starts in the middle, zero, and so this is L over two. So the edge multiplied, uh, sorry, not multiplied, the L, so what, L over two at the resonance frequency. We'll call it N, but it really means the first one. That is none other than the D times the V. This is the same equation we did, we did earlier, over one over K sine KL, or sorry, KX over cosine one half k l and because x equals one half over k uh, this now changes to tangent this changes the tangent um, k one half k l because we put that l over two in, instead of x uh, after this we want to uh, include losses in the material because we know that uh, there are some internal losses which I described a lot in the loss chapter and the losses which are going to be occurring in resonance is because there's a lot of mechanical energy we're going to be accounting for mechanical loss only and this is actually ends up being a very good uh, representation of what's happening but before we do that we're going to define another term we're going to find omega big omega as equaling one half KL and in order to include losses we use these um, uh, complex notations so we're going to assume this KL is complex so this will actually end up being uh, one half K and the complex value um, kind of goes through well, let's just do that for us we can assume the sound velocity is complex. Well, we'll start at the very beginning. Uh, the elastic compliance is complex, and it comes in this form. Uh, tangent. And we can learn a lot about wh why this is in the lost lecture, that which I did. So go to learnpeels.org, learn about this. Uh, from there, I'm going to define this, this parameter, which is one half this and we'll assume that's also uh, uh, complex again and therefore what's going to what's end, we're going to end up happening is we're going to get the magnitude of the sound velocity and one plus now since this the way this complex numbers work it ends up being a one plus uh, one half since there's a square root it kind of ends up being a one half in the complex way so there should be a j in there okay we'll put a little j right here then tangent, no, not yeah, tangent phi. There you go. 
Then, as I said, we define this term, which is also complex, and we're going to say that it is equal to this, 1 half k over L. 1 half k times L, sorry. And this is also complex, and uh, k was equal to omega divided by sun velocity. So because this, when you when you put something ne uh, underneath, and this ends up changing the sign of the complex value. So we'll actually end up getting one half k l one minus j one half tangent theta 